In the late 90s, the MMO had started to root itself into the beginnings of early online video games. Many of the MMO games offered large fantasy worlds that the players and their friends can explore and conquer together. This sets the stage for what was going to be the first Final Fantasy MMO. But instead of having this as a side game of the Final Fantasy franchise, it was Sakaguchi who fought to have this game as the next mainline title. And so Final Fantasy XI was born. This game brought many new things to the franchise, and some of these new ideas saw their way into the next Final Fantasy MMO, Final Fantasy XIV. And so, today, we'll be looking at almost all the things that Final Fantasy XIV took inspiration from Final Fantasy XI. As always, there will be a spoiler alert for both Final Fantasy XIV and Final Fantasy XI, so consider this your spoiler warning. Final Fantasy XI was first released in Japan in 2002 for the PlayStation 2. North America did not see a release until October 2003, and Europe didn't see a release until September 2004. Final Fantasy XI implemented one of the first instances of cross-platform play which allowed PC, PS2, and eventually Xbox 360 players to play on the same servers. Final Fantasy XIV kept this trend going when A Realm Reborn was released for both the PS3 and PC back in 2013. When starting your character in Final Fantasy XI, you have the choice between five different races. These are the Hume, Elven, Tarutaru, Galka, and Mithra. Galka and Mithra would have one gender available, males for Galka and females for Mithra. These races served as the basis for the races found in Final Fantasy XIV, as the Hur, Elizen, Lolifel, Rogadin, and Mikote. In the original release of Final Fantasy XIV, these paralleled Final Fantasy XI even further by only having the female Makote and the male Rogadin available. It was only when A Realm Reborn was launched that the gender counterparts of these races were available. Now, it's no surprise that many of the weapon skills, spells, and abilities in Final Fantasy XIV got their start in Final Fantasy XI. What you see now on screen are the various skills that appeared in both Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV. All the names in red are abilities that used to be in Final Fantasy XIV but have since been removed from the game. Now, I'm not going to go through every single skill between the two games because that would make this video needlessly long, but I'll go through a few examples very quickly. We see influences of Corsair and Puppet Master within the machinist job in Final Fantasy XIV with their various abilities. We see direct influences from Final Fantasy XI such as White Mage's Benediction and Paladin's Invincible taking the form of Final Fantasy XIV's Benediction and Hollowed Ground. There are also two Red Mage abilities in Final Fantasy XIV that took spell effects from Final Fantasy XI. Here, we see the comparisons between the two. Another ability we'll talk about is Summoner's Astral Flow. In both games, Astral Flow changes depending on what has been summoned. In Final Fantasy XI, Carbuncle's Astral Flow is Searing Light, which also appears in Final Fantasy XIV. Searing Light is an AoE attack that has been casted from the Carbuncle. 
However, in Final Fantasy XIV, Searing Light is an AoE buff that increases damage done to the party by 3%. Similar to Final Fantasy XI, Searing Light used to be casted by the Carbuncle in Final Fantasy XIV. This is no longer the case in Final Fantasy XIV as of Patch 6.1 and now is casted by the player. One notable thing as well, Carbuncle's model from Final Fantasy XIV was directly taken from Final Fantasy XI. Now, this is a great time to segue into our next part where we'll show off almost all the enemy models that came from XI. It's no surprise that many of the in-game assets from Eleven were upscaled and inserted into Final Fantasy XIV. This upcoming segment is in no way all the enemy models, but I tried to grab as many as I could from both games. So, let's do a speedrun of the comparisons of enemy models between both games. There are also many specific boss monsters in Final Fantasy XIV that got their start as notorious monsters in Final Fantasy XI. In this next section, I tried to match as many of them with their names, so some of the models may not match between the games. Again, this list isn't all of them, so feel free to comment down below on the ones that I missed.
I'm also going to mention that there are many minions that share the same appearance as their Final Fantasy XI counterparts. Two notable minions that I would like to draw attention to are the Chocobo Chick and Cat Shi. The Chocobo Chick in Final Fantasy XIV seems to take their appearance from the Chocobo Chick found in Final Fantasy XI. And while I did mention that the quote found in the Kachi doll came from Final Fantasy VII, this appearance of the minion takes the form of the Kachi found in Final Fantasy XI, specifically from the Wings of the Goddess expansion. The three grand companies of Veorzia may have had some influences from Final Fantasy XI. Our first example is the leader of the Immortal Flames, Rabon Aldin. Rabon's name may be a reference to Rabon in Final Fantasy XI, in which he was the captain of the Immortal Lions in the Treasures of Otragon expansion. Our next reference is with Admiral Morweb's firearm, the Death Penalty, which is named after the Corsair's mythic weapon. And finally, Kane Sena's staff, which is named the Claustrum, is named after the Relic Staff from Final Fantasy XI. In the ninja quest line for Final Fantasy XIV, Oboro gives you the password into the ninja headquarters. The reply after the word Ayame is Kaede. Ayame and Kaede are both characters within the ninja quest line in Final Fantasy XI. In the history of the Pugilus Guild, they state that a woman named Cornelia was the founder of the guild. In Final Fantasy XI, there was a woman by the name of Cornelia, who was a monk. Much like the Taru Taru in Final Fantasy XI, the Thaumaturges of Eorzea are predominantly Lalafell. In the 2.0 Black Mage storyline, when you learn a new ability, it is said that you are imbued with the power of Shatoto. This is a reference to Shantoto in Final Fantasy XI, who is also a powerful Black Mage. Other references to Shantoto include the achievement when finishing the Stardust Rod, which is her iconic laugh in Final Fantasy XI. In the 2.0 Goldsmith questline, there is a mammoth named Gigi, in which it is revealed that their original name was Menaging. This name comes from one of Alfmau's automatons from Final Fantasy XI. Alfmau's other automaton, Avjang, appears as a B-rank hunt in central Thanalan. An NPC within the Weaver's Guild sings Distant Worlds Together, Miracles from Realms Beyond, which is a lyric to the song Distant Worlds, this song is played at the end of the Chains of Permathia main storyline. And finally, there is an area within the firmament known as the Rollenberry Field. This is a reference to Rollenberry Fields found in Final Fantasy XI. The name Rollenberry can also be seen in Final Fantasy XIV with the actual berries that can be gathered and the dye Rollenberry Red. Although Garuda has appeared numerous times within the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy XI was the first to appoint Garuda as the Summon of Wind. Ever since Final Fantasy XI, Garuda has appeared as the Summon of Wind for Final Fantasy XIV, XV, and the upcoming XVI. Speaking of primals, Titan's look in Final Fantasy XIV is very similar to Titan's look in Final Fantasy XI. While Diablos originally came from Final Fantasy VIII, this boss from Final Fantasy XIV gets a lot of its attacks from Final Fantasy XI, including Nightmare, Kamisado, and Runous Omen. In Wanderer's Palace Hard, the three Mumulja bosses are based off of the Mumulja notorious monsters found in Final Fantasy XI. Frumius Kohilja is based off of Landslord Gahilja, a Mumulja knight that rides on the back of a Wivray. Slithy Zululja is based off of Sage Lord Malaja. And finally, Maxo Malajaja is based off of Gululjaja, the leader of the Mamulja Savages. Two other dungeons have reused enemy models from Final Fantasy XI. The first is the Lost City of Amdapur, reusing the Void Monk, Mana Pots, and Mana Dolls. This next dungeon is Faro Sirius Hard 
reusing the Graal Luminary enemies originally found in the Garden of Rumet dungeon in Final Fantasy XI. And now we have Gilgamesh, who is a wielder of many swords, including two swords from Final Fantasy XI. These are the Hauteclair Sword and the Riddle Scimitar. This next dungeon is a dungeon found in Endwalker. Although I will not be talking directly about the story, you can skip to this timestamp if you want to skip the spoiler for now. A dungeon introduced in 6.1 is known as Alzadal's Legacy. This dungeon is an entire reference to the areas found in the Treasures of Otragon expansion. Many enemies of this dungeon are enemies that are found in Final Fantasy XI, which includes the Chariot Boss. The name Alzadal refers to the ancient civilization known as Alzadal. This name can also be found in Razadhan, Alzadal's Peace. The interior of this dungeon is based off of Alzadal's undersea ruins found in Final Fantasy XI, which includes massive windows looking into the underwater area. The exterior of this dungeon is based off of the Kadarva Mire and the Arapago Reef, two areas that surround the undersea ruins. The names of each sub-area in this dungeon are directly named after the areas found in the undersea ruins. Each remnant is a tower in Final Fantasy XI and are salvage zones. The names also come from where the towers are located. Bafla refers to the Bafla thickets, Arapago refers to the Arapago Reef, and Zeholm refers to Mount Zeholm. In Stormblood, there are trials known as the Four Lords. These Four Lords are Gembu, Byako, Suzaku, and Seiryu. While the lore of the Four Lords comes from Chinese mythology, the first time we see the Four Lords within a Final Fantasy title is Final Fantasy XI. All Four Lords appear as a notorious monster and were introduced in the Rise of the Zalart expansion. Another prominent character found within the Final Fantasy XIV Four Lords storyline is Tenzin. This is a possible reference to Tenzin from Final Fantasy XI in which he was also a samurai and an important part of the Chains of Permathia and Rhapsodies of Vanityl storylines. In the Ryzen Temple, the music is the same music found in Ryzen Jima in Final Fantasy XI. We've seen Eureka in this series before with Final Fantasy III and Final Fantasy V. However, many of the gameplay aspects found in Eureka are heavily inspired by Final Fantasy XI. While some of the aspects are found in old school MMO gameplay such as chaining monsters to level and having massively overleveled monsters within the map, there are still aspects from Final Fantasy XI such as leveling down and the use of the term Notorious Monsters. A few notable Notorious Monsters include Copycat Cassie, which is based off of Capricious Cassie, King Arthro, the Providence Watcher, which is the final boss of the Void Watch content in Final Fantasy XI, and Avni, a UFO monster that appears in Altaiu and is the model for the Jailer of Love. There is also gear and minions from Eureka that is taken directly from Final Fantasy XI. On screen is the gear that appears in Eureka that was originally from Final Fantasy XI. Some of the minions found in Eureka include the Wind Up Mithra, Taru Taru, Elven, and the Conditional Virtue. And finally, the Baldessian Arsenal, the dungeon instance within Eureka. This instance houses the most infamous notorious monster known as the Absolute Virtue. The music found in BA was originally from Final Fantasy XI. The area music is the Gates of Paradise, the Garden of Rumet. Absolute Virtue's music is Onslaught.
and Proto Ozma's music is Turmoil. Now, before we end, we need to talk about two crossover events with Final Fantasy XI. The first of which is known as the Burgeoning Dread. This event took place in January 2014 and was rerun in August of the same year. In this event, we see our character investigate mysterious events that are happening around the Black Shroud. At some point in our investigation, we encounter a monstrous sorceress, which turns out to be a gigantic version of the Black Mage Shantoto from Final Fantasy XI. She used the doll to test the might of this world and concluded that this world wasn't worth taking over. This event ends with Shantoto shrinking the doll and giving it to the Warrior of Light as a gift. Our second event is known as the Maiden's Rhapsody. This event took place in 2015 and was repeated again in 2017, 2020, and 2022. The story features a character named Iroa. It is revealed that she has come from the world of Vanadil and is seeking a way to get back to her world. In Final Fantasy XI, she was the main character of the Rhapsodies of Vanadil storyline. In this storyline, the adventurer is taken through many areas they have visited before. To some players, this serves as a victory lap as they revisit many characters and locations from the past expansions of Final Fantasy XI. In the Maiden's Rhapsody, the event serves as a tribute to Rhapsodies of Vanadil as the Warrior of Light and Iroa are taken through many fights that are reminiscent of the fights that occurred in Final Fantasy XI. There are also many references to Final Fantasy XI such as mentioning Selvina and Maura, two areas found in Final Fantasy XI. At the end of the event, Iroa recollects many of the people she and the adventurer have met throughout the years in Vanadil. There is also an incredibly cool reference that when looking at the Warrior of Light, she is reminded of her master, the Adventurer, from Final Fantasy XI. This is a cool nod to those who have played Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV, as the Adventurer and Warrior of Light are one and the same player. And finally, the gear awarded in this event is Iroa's outfit. The world of Vanadil was the first look into an expansive MMO world within the Final Fantasy series. The series up until this point had been single player storylines, but Eleven was the first to offer a world alive with multiple players to interact with. Final Fantasy XI also offered many amazing storylines, some of which are incredibly underrated. There are those today who call the world Eorzea their home. To some players though, the world of Vanadil was their first Final Fantasy home. To some, the experiences that they had were truly unique and was what made Final Fantasy XI special to them. Thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to the many people who helped with these references. I wouldn't have been able to get many of these without your help. In the next video, we'll be looking at the world of Final Fantasy XII.